church and laugh. You must be dead. <laughs> that was your cue. There you go. Well, <laughs> it is time to have a good morning. Glad you're here on this beautiful Memorial Day. Took away from your uh, barbecued ribs that Bobby's got going for us all. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, look up. Look up. There's new lights in this place. Come on, give us lights. Look at that. Look at those Whoa. Look at that. Uh-oh, I'm going to start playing that. <laughs> well, we got number one part of this project done. That's only one. There's your new speaker right over there. They're not installed because there's three bolts coming from Italy. On a slow bolt from Italy. You got them here, they sound good. But you can't hang them up there. Now the guy said, if you want to hang them, you can because it's your liability. But I can't hang them. And uh, so what Stan says is, I guess he says, go ahead and pound the wax. Hey, take a minute and hug on some people. We're going to bring the lights up a little bit. It's so good to see you. It's a memorial day. God bless you.
Boom. John, a couple double A's might be in good order. A couple double A batteries. I'm sorry. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. How's everybody doing? Ooh, I'm loud. I'm hot today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It suddenly got quiet in here. Everybody's watching me. Put these batteries in my pocket. How's everybody doing this Memorial Weekend? Whew, my goodness sakes, I am hot. <laughs> Usher's lady in the second row. Get her under control. <laughs> we better move on. We better move on. Well, I was going to complain about the weather, but why? We're live. That's good. Got your Bibles with you? I'm going to plug right in. Turn to Psalms 103. So by the time you get here next week, they're going to be digging in the parking lot, putting up parking lot lights, so they tell me. Ooh, everybody say, ooh. That sounded good. Now, the lighting people are having fun, and uh, they're playing around, they're up and down, it's like, you can entertain Sandy, but it ain't cheap. Just buy her electronics, and she's happy. Did I tell you, did I ask you, I didn't tell you to do anything, did I ask you to turn 103, Psalms 103? A while back I was perusing through the book of Psalms, in our daily reading, wound up there. Got to Psalms 103, and, you know, I've read Psalms 103 a lot of times, just like you have. But a few things began to uh, jump out at me, and kind of, I, I actually, um, I'm going to talk about this for a few weeks. I didn't intend on starting this. Oh, by the way, if you want to know what's going on around this place, go on the website. People, I'm not giving you any heads up on anything. Um, I'm so kind <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, you can download a life-size glossy of me. That's, that was uncalled for. My wife's like, oh, please stop. Um, I'm in a good mood. I'm always in a good mood, but I'm in an especially cheery mood today. I don't know why, but I just feel like we should party. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, um, and I've told you in the past that I happen to believe it's a core tenet of mine that as Christ followers, when you, th there's something about us, it, and it shouldn't be arrogance, it shouldn't be, you know, we got ours and sucks to be you, it shouldn't be we're better than you, it shouldn't be you sinners and all that kind of stuff. But when we understand, when we understand what our father, this is our, our dad, our dad. Our Heavenly Fathers, our Dad. Now, some of us, some people, like, I didn't have a really good example of a good dad. I'm sorry, but he is a good, good father, like we sang. He's good. There's nothing bad in him. There's nothing bad in him. So when you understand how our dad has opened up life for us, and then you understand that Jesus... Uh, what he did for us on the cross, what he bought for us on the cross and then conquering the grave. It's just not that he died on the cross, it's that he blew out of the grave. And it should have a profound effect on us and move us past religion 
and into a quest to get everything that we got coming. And, and so we're not trying to become religious. We're trying to become um, less and less us and more and more Jesus, which means less of my thinking and my attitude and less of my junk and more and more of Jesus just oozing and bleeding through us. Just kind of, blah, it just kind of comes. Now, when you're looking for a new job, or if, you, if you're about to sign on for a new job, what do you talk about, okay? You, you talk about what? The pay, okay? That's a good one. What, you figured out the pay? I'm going to pay you 30 bucks an hour. That's about what Linda gets. Then what do you, what do you look for? Job description, are you serious? Let's go with benefits. Who wants to know what you're supposed to do, you know? <laughs> yeah, benefits, because you want to know what? You want to know what kind of vacation and, you know, whether you got, um, you know, what, yeah, vacation. You, you get a job, you want to know when vacation starts. Am I right? <laughs> Thanks. It's my first day. When is vacation around this place? Not a, good, not a good thing to bring up on your first day anyway. Yeah, you want to ask about the benefits because you care about your family. Now, look at Psalms 103. And so I was reading this a while back, and then um, a few of us were talking, and and this popped back into my mind. This was a conversation several months ago, and a few of us were talking, this popped back in my mind. And I said, oh, hey, quick, go to Psalms 103. And so we, we wound up doing this impromptu uh, Bible study in the parking lot. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now say this with me. And his, okay, now say that again, a little bit of emphasis on all. Forget not his. Okay. And what's going to happen now in Psalms 103 is he's going to list uh, five, one, two, three, four, five benefits. Right? Now look at these. Look at these. This is really cool. Look at this. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, I like this, and satisfies you, or satisfies your mouth with good things. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, yum. Jesus invented Mexican food. It's there. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Um, uh, you know, Lori and I were in Ireland. You do not go to Ireland for the food. It is really bland. And we would talk to people, and we would just, after a week there, we were craving America because we had Thai and Chinese and Mexican. Have I told you a really good friend of mine, pastors in Spokane, and every time I go to see him, have I told you this before? He says, hey, I want to take you to this really good Mexican restaurant. And we go to the same Mexican restaurant. The food is, eh. Okay. The last time, every time, the last time we were there, I said, dude, I am from Moses Lake. We have, how many Mexican restaurants we got in this town, including eight? No, the men, there must be 40 of them. I mean, and I said, we've got Jalisco, we got Michoacan, we got, and he's looking at me going, is, is that better than this? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Quit taking me to Mexican food in Spokane. It's like, come on. And so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at this. This is David talking, and he's speaking, and he, who he's speaking to? He's speaking to him Sell. He said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. This is a freebie. You need to be talking to yourself. You need to be talking to your soul. He's saying, listen here, David. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He's talking to his soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions. He's saying, hey, self, you need to bless the Lord. You need to bless the Lord. You need to thank the Lord, and then you need to remind the Lord or you need to remind yourself, not the Lord. The Lord's got it down pat. You know, we don't need to remind Jesus of anything. We don't need to remind our Father of anything. He's in, you need to remind yourself, soul, of the benefits that you get from knowing God. There are benefits. And then he goes on, he names these benefits. 
He names these benefits. I'm going to give them to you one more time. These are good. He forgives all your iniquities. We're going to look at that one today. He heals all your diseases. Somebody walked up and told Lori, and she came and got me. She goes, the sister is getting healed. She used to not be able to lift her arms. I can't point her out because she didn't give me permission. And she goes, I couldn't do this. Now she's walking around flapping like a duck. It's the most crazy, crazy thing, man. <laughs> she's flapping, about to take off. Who redeems your life from destruction. Destruction was meant for you, the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Our Father says, it's not going to happen. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Oh, man, I, I'm, I'm about to get going here. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. I got to that sad. I, I'm almost to week number five. I got to rein myself back in. Because I looked at that, and I thought, does that mean what I think it means? Would God care that much? Uh, you go do some studying, and you'll find out, okay? So he's talking to himself. So I'm going to tell you three things about forgiveness today, okay? You write this? Get, the, get your notes out. This is going to be good. Look at person next to you and say, this is going to be good. Put some feeling in it. This is going to be incredible. Where does this guy get this stuff? Okay, too much. Okay, number one, he, rem <laughs> he removes. Everybody says removes. He removes our transgressions. Our transgressions. I'm going to explain to you there's actually three different words for sin. We call it missing the mark, okay? And there's, th those are all important. This point, I'm going to use, there's three definitions or three words. This point right here, uh, I put down transgressions, but I want you to focus on iniquity. So on your list or on your handout where it says transgressions, above that put iniquities. And I'll explain to you why this is important that you understand this. So if you go in Psalms 103, and if you've got your smartphones out or your Bibles, and, and I love the sound of paper, you know, we, in, in writing in the margins. So when you go, if you go down to verse 10, he says, Psalms 103, verse 10, and he says this, he has not dealt with us according to our sins. That's a good place to say, thank you, thank you. Right there is a really good sign, okay? He's not dealt with you according to your sin. Notice the word sins. He knows us. Okay, I just throw that in there. Okay, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Notice the word iniquities there. Okay, for as the heavens are uh, high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear, fear him. Fear him. Verse 12. Verse 12 is a very famous verse. You probably quoted this, now you know where it's from. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So I hope I get enough time today to unpack this whole thing because even there and, and you know you can go into your your laptop or your home computer or something and download you don't have to go to school and learn hebrew and greek and waste all that time you can actually do this now so uh, bible schools are pretty upset because you can fake your way through greek and hebrew like never before now i want to explain the difference between iniquity and transgression they're both sin but this is really important i, I really want you to they're both sin, but there's a difference between iniquity and transgression. I want you to understand this. This is a good place to write this down. Because it'll, understand, it'll help you to understand stand, it'll, help, it'll help you to understand why we continually are screwing up. We're just always messing up. So write this down, okay? I don't know if I have this down. I can't remember your handouts. Iniquity is inward motivation. Do, you, do I have that down there? It's iniquity. Just think this. Iniquity is the inward motivation that drives you to sin. Okay? So transgression is the outward movement of iniquity that's the inward motivation. In other words, you never had an outward movement until you had an inward motivation. Okay? You got that? The, out, the outward motivation spawns itself from the inward motivation. Or the outward trans, the outward movement. Well, I keep hearing your phones go off. I hear the Amber Alert going off. But anyway, hopefully they catch the person. And I should shut up right there when they catch them. I'm assuming my phone is vibrating, so I know it's going on. I, I've got it on vibrate, and it's like it kind of tickles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what threw me off you go there you go you have to acknowledge it are you kidding me well for crying out loud i'm i'm, I'm 
I almost said I'm getting a cheap thrill up here, but that's not what you want to say. This is really stupid. Okay, you're right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill this thing completely. Ah, oh, devil. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Don't you long for the days when we didn't have these? Oh, man. What excuses we had then. Anyway, uh, so transgression is the outward movement. It started with an inward motivation. Now, the word transgression is not a word we use a lot. It's, a, it's an old English word. The closest word we have to it would be trespass. Okay, transgress would be trespass. Transgress really means to step over a boundary. That's what it literally means. It means to step over a boundary. So we would think that it's trespass. So it's inward motivation, iniquity, transgression is an outward movement. Are you getting that? Let me give you some analogies. Iniquity is in the heart. Transgressions in the hand. Okay? Uh, iniquity is the attitude on the inside. Transgression is the action on the outside. Like, let me give you one. Lust is in the heart. Adultery is the transgression. In, uh, lust is the iniquity. Adultery is a transgression. Are you following me? Um, so... We have to understand that both of them are sin. We can't, there is this lie that's going around in Christendom that says it's okay to look, just don't touch. No. Yeah, and all the sisters go, try it. Try it. A mentor of mine said, first look is free, second one is sin. Second one is sin. And, and you've got to know this because Jesus told the Pharisees, because the Pharisees, have you noticed that nothing is new? The Pharisees tried this. The Pharisees were teaching, well, as long as you didn't act on what was in your heart, it wasn't sin. And Jesus come along and he says, you know, uh, now you know the law says not to transgress, not to commit adultery. But I say to you that if you lust in your heart, you've already committed it. Okay? Uh, you know you've heard not to murder. Murder is the outward action. But I tell you, if you hate your brother, you've already murdered him. Jesus tied both of them to sin because he was coming against a heresy that was getting a whole lot of people off the mark. Now listen, when, when the iniquity is in the heart, that's your opportunity to grab the sin and stop it. Okay? It's like the Holy Spirit is saying, look, 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 look your attitude, look at your heart. You're about to do something. Are you following me? And so Jesus was trying to tell the Pharisees, and he's trying to tell us that inward motivation is also sin. You say, well, how could it be? Because that sin is the first step in a series of sins that's going to get you to the outward expression of a heart condition. It's a heart condition. So the word transgression uh, means you know, to step over a line. Let me tell you what iniquity means. Iniquity, this is a really easy thing, because it's not a word we all use, but literally from the... The best translation from Hebrew would be inequity. And so this is really easy. Iniquity, just change the N-I-N-I to I-N-E because this is what it really means. Iniquity literally means not equal to God's holiness. In other words, you're not equal to God. Okay? So I love this, that Christ died for all of my sins even the hidden ones that i'm struggling with you got to understand it man all of us struggle with something all of us some of us struggle with a lot of something and if we keep it buried it's going to eat us on the inside so religion teaches you to suppress jesus teaches you to get rid and get free are you with me religion says just suppress it, and so when you come to church, you got to fake it till you make it. So you got to pay. You got to put this stupid look on your face. And go, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. God is good, and 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 you're suppressing, but you're not dealing. And the Holy Spirit likes to go down. This is why we tend to try and deal with what's on the outside, and so we'll see people, and we'll go, we got to fix that about them. But the problem is the Holy Spirit's probably working on something totally different that he doesn't want you, you know. That's why we don't focus on trying to fix people. We want people to fall more and more in love with Jesus. Because the more in love with Jesus you get, the better you're going to be. So it's not like, let's make you guys suppress. 
And I've had pastors tell me that. Well, you just got to try harder and you just got to push it down, push it down. <laughs> That's exhausting. It's better to allow the Holy Spirit to go in there and go, well, let me go to work on this thing. So let me show you a verse that's perfect. Iniquity remembers on the inside, it's inward. Transgressions on the outside. So Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is what's called a messianic chapter, meaning it looks to Jesus. That's what it's talking about. So Isaiah 53, 5. He was, who's that talking about? It's talking about Jesus, right? He was wounded, that's outwardly, for our transgressions. He was bruised, that's inwardly, for our iniquities. He, in other words, he covered it all. Did you get that? He covered it all. So, see, a bruise is inward bleeding, right? If I cut myself, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be bleeding. And it's an outward, okay? But there's a bruise that's inward. So Jesus, this is it. Jesus' atonement was perfect sacrifice because he covered everything. Now, listen, hang on to this, because you and I would have just covered the visible. We would have never dealt with the invisible. Did you get that? Jesus dealt with all of it. We're focusing on the outward. Are you guys getting this? We're trying to fix the outward man. And Jesus is fixing the inward man. Are you following me? It just, even if you're not, just wave your hand and I'll back up. Because this is important. Because this is, where, this is where Christians and churches go off the rails. Right here. We start trying to focus on the outside. And so, like when I was growing up, you know, uh, I was 17 when I gave my life to Christ. I went to church my whole life. But the greatest sin then was long hair. Um, that was terrible. Listening to rock and roll. And I was in the 70s, so Cheech and Chong was like, you're going. Yeah. How do you guys know about Cheech and Chong? Oh, forget this. Let's talk about the outside. <laughs> That was a setup. Notice how I slipped that in there? Isn't that good? Well, yeah, all the younger people go. You don't need to know. My dad got in my car one time. I had a Cheech and Chong in the 8-track. He said, let me borrow your car. I'm going to town. He wanted to look cool. I'm saying, okay. He's pulling out. I'm going, oh, no. What do I got in the 8-track player? He flips that thing on and not good. I got home. And he lined up every 8-track I owned behind my car, behind the tires. And he said, just go ahead and get in that Hummer and just back right across those 8-tracks. And I said, Dad, you know how much each of those costs? He goes, well, <laughs> just go right ahead, son. You know, that trash is not even on my property. And I'm like, <laughs> let me sell them. I'll sell them and give half the money to Jesus. Anyway, didn't work. Um, so I, I gave my life to Christ at 17, but I had long hair. And I had a paperback Bible. You can't have a paperback Bible. It's got to be King James, leather bound, and you have to have your hair cut. So I show up at church with my paperback, non-King James Bible and with long hair. And I'm just, I'm clipping to church. And, uh, you know, the deacons met me at the top of the stairs. They said, where do you think you're going? I said, I'm going to praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And they said, not looking like that. They were focused on the outside. They didn't see that the inside of David finally given his life to Christ. And I'm like, well, this is a bummer. <laughs> I went on. Anyway, what does it mean that God has moved our transgressions as far as the east is away? Because that's what the Bible says. It doesn't say he hid them. It says he removed them. Well, as far as the east is, you know how far that is? It's infinite. It's infinite. In other words, let me say it another way. He has removed. He hasn't suppressed he hasn't controlled. Jesus is not here to control you. He's here to remove that stuff that's leading to death. Okay? So think of it this way. We, you know, Jesus wouldn't think of this, but some of us, we have, this, we have this thing in our mind that up in heaven, there's a file cabinet with just your name on it. And it's got all of our sins. And some of you are up to like eight or nine file cabinets, okay? Some of you are beyond that. You know, Tom Chaplin's got like, he's got a building this size of file cabinets. You know, me, I've got like one little two-drawer file cabinet. Anyway, <laughs> my wife, throw me under the bus. She says, man, you got a warehouse. Anyway, <laughs> some of us think that Jesus walks up and we say, oh, Father, forgive me for that sin. And Jesus says, oh, he wants forgiven for da 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 God pulls and pulls the drawer and he goes, well, in 2009 you said that, in 2011 you did that, and look what you did. In your... And we think he's keeping track. 
We literally think he's keeping track. But our Bible tells us that God has removed. He has removed it. It's not there. So he's not counting them any time. As a matter of fact, when you're when we went through this months ago or six months or a year ago, we went through the, the Lord's Prayer. And notice how far down in priority was forgive me. It was after ble- it was after a whole bunch of stuff. Why? Because the Father wants us focused on him, not me. And not my stuff. So here he's he's removed our transgression. You guys getting this? This is exciting. Number two. Number two. Oh. I love this. I love this. This is Dave Chandler's paraphrase. He has Alzheimer's when it comes to my sin. I'm sorry. My mom had Alzheimer's. It's a terrible thing. But here's one thing I knew. My mom actually forgot all the stupid stuff I did. I'd go in there and she'd go, I love you. You're the best. And I'd tell her everything that ever happened was my brother Gary's fault. How did I get here, Gary? He took your car. He sold your house. That rotten brother. I'm sorry. Okay. He remembers our sins no more. Psalms, or Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, even I am he who blots out your transgressions. Think of a whiteboard. Sometimes I have it up here. Think of, you, you, you have cleaned that whiteboard completely clean. Now just think of it this way. God wiped out your whiteboard with the blood of Jesus Christ. He just cleaned it completely. And he did that so that I could have a relationship with him. Understand something. Why did God forgive my sins? Why did he take my sins away from me? Because he wants to hang out with me. (laughs) We're going, well, he did that for us. Yes, but he did it because he wants to hang out with us, and he can't be in the presence of sin. So he's like, I don't remember your sin. If I remembered your sin, I wouldn't be able to hang out with you. Um, By the way, he chose to do this. He didn't have to do this. It says, I chose not to remember that, that word, and I will not. The Hebrew word, uh, or the, yeah, the Hebrew word there can be translated, I won't, I will not, I choose. So this is what the Lord spoke to me. I said, he said, by an act of my will, I choose not to remember your past, Dave. Now, I remember my past, but God says, by an act of my will. Hebrews 8, 12 says it this way, for I will be merciful to the unrighteous, that's you and me, and their sins, that's us, and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Now the word remembered means to recall or to bring up something to use. Okay? You know, when you study for a test, you go in and you hopefully to recall what you study so you can use it. Are you with me? Okay, that's what recall means. Just, I was talking to this, this old guy, and I told, or this young guy, old guy. I, I go in a room full of pastors, and I look around, and I'm like, dang, I'm the old guy. See, it hit me. They're all in their th- 20s and 30s, I'm going. Where, where's my people? Um, they're out back taking a nap. <laughs> I'm like, it's it, I thought. A bunch of whippersnappers, punks. That's why I told them, the older, you know, the older you get, the more you believe in the hereafter. And they would say, what do you mean by that? Well, how many times you've gone to the room and said, now what am I hereafter? You guys, that was, oh, that was set up perfect. I'm telling you. I said, the older you get, the more you believe in the hereafter. Oh, oh yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You thought I was being spiritual. I, okay, let's move on. I was. You know, it happens. You just walk in there. Yeah, men, ladies, keep your hands down. Men, how many times do you go to the refrigerator looking for something and you cannot find it? Mm-hmm. And then how many times does your wife come along and she puts her hand right on it? They had it in their pocket. Now here's what you need to know about God. He has chosen not to bring up your past. Don't think that, I heard a guy say one time, 
he, he, he can't. He can't. And I said, well, that's true, but he chose not to be able to. He chose to say. Now, Satan loves to bring it up. All Satan can do is live in the rearview mirror. All God does is look out the front and go, I don't know what your past is, but let me tell you what your future is going to be like. And that's what you need to remember. And so we're always trying... I, okay, tuck your toes. When, you know, when, I'm not a very good marriage counselor. I'll turn you to good marriage counselors, but one of the things I notice is people always bringing up what they did in the past. In 1997, I made meatloaf. and he, da, 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 da. They're living in the past. we got to become people that don't remember each other's sins. Let's just practice being like Jesus. Let's just quit bringing up people's past. It's why I don't like testimony. You know, churches do testimony and I, well, I'm glad you came from what? But I don't like it when people just got to sit there and tell me their street creds. I don't want to hear it. I mean, I know we all have a past. I'm not going to share my past. You don't need to know it. Other than it was spotless. No, let me, so let me explain something theologically to you. The Bible never says God forgets your sins. I hear people saying that. It does not say God forgets your sins. It does say he chooses to remember no more. People say, well, God has forgotten my sins. No, God has chosen. Listen, why is that so big? Because one of God's attributes is he's omniscient. You know what omniscient means? It means he knows everything. Well, if he could not remember, if, 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 he, if he was forgetting, dang, he'd forget about 95% of my life. He chooses not to remember. He chooses not. He chooses not to bring it up. He chooses not to bring it up. I, I better leave that one alone. I had something written down, and I cannot believe that that Linda made me write that joke down. <laughs> no, I can't because every woman in this building will start throwing something. I was going to make jokes about how us men forget everything. We go to sleep, we forget everything, and, and you ladies don't have that problem. You remember everything. That was a good thing. It's smart. <laughs> I'm going to take a drink of water, shut up, and move on now. It is, it is a, <laughs> did I ever tell you, we had a daughter we forgot at church twice? It's the truth. We, load, we, had, we had, I don't know, uh, Lori had six, seven kids when I met her. I don't know what it was. Um, we, we were pastoring, and we load a van. We load all these kids in the van. We drive all the way home. We lived out in the country. We drive all the way home, hungry. Um, you know, uh, and, and, and we get out of the car and the kids start, and we realize ah, we forgot one. Everybody gets back in the van. We drive back to the church. We pull up in the church and there she is. She's about three. Looking at the do out the door. And she was locked in, okay? She, she, come on, she's doing great. Okay. <laughs> she's just sitting there. We pull up, we jump out, we throw her in. Oh, we were just, hey, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Little counseling, she was fine. About three or four months later, we go home, get all the kids in the van, go home. We're getting out, they're getting out. And we have, Dang, we forgot the same one again. Everybody get back in the van. We got them back in the van. We drove, there she is. We took her out, I think we took her out for ice cream and everything counseling is doing she has never forgotten that and she will not let us forget that okay she doesn't my pro <laughs> okay three times yes Jurgen okay three times we forgot her okay thank you Jurgen and Jurgen and Mary showed up with grace put markers on them yeah one time we looked out and she was walking across the cornfield because she decided to go to somebody's house and they were like six miles away and she's just trooping out and she had the general direction. She's like three or four. I'm like, where are you going? I'm going to Roger's house. I'm like, what? Get back in the house, kid. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So he remembers our sins no more. Here's the third thing. 
He releases us from our iniquities. He releases us. Now, notice here I'm using the word iniquity. I've switched it now. now and that, because Psalms 103, 3, you can translate that word iniquity. It's the same Hebrew word. It, just, it, it has several meanings. The word forgive means to release. And so literally the word forgive paints a picture of a person owing a debt. And we release them from the debt. Okay, so we release them from the debt and the debt is completely gone and it can never be brought up. It's actually like, the word there is like, I release you from a debt. It's like you paid for it. So it's like, you you understand what I'm saying? The word says, it's, it's like, I released you. I can't come back to change my mind. It means you're released. Now, the reason God releases us from a debt, you know why he releases us from that debt? Take a stab at it. Why does God choose to release us from our debt? Close, because Jesus paid it. What, what's, what's, what's that? Say it one more time. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. You cannot afford. So God took the debt away and had his son pay it. Now, listen to me. You want to write this down. I I don't know if I wrote this down. God won't and he cannot charge you twice for the same sin. Jesus already paid it. Are you getting this? Jesus paid it, it's like it's paid in full. God can't and he won't charge twice for the same sin. So why are you trying to pay for your own sins? God, Jesus paid for them, that's what he did. There used to be a song, uh, uh, I owed a debt I could not pay, he paid a debt he did not owe. That's the thing. So this word, and this is so important because if you don't get this down, you're going to be trying to pay over and over and over and over and you can't and what that does is it keeps you it keeps you in bondage and as long as you're in bondage then jesus can't set you free and we're going to talk about that here next week okay so this word this word uh iniquity it means he releases us he released us from our iniquities he forgives in other words it's he released you it's you don't owe it anymore now this is this is such good news. An iniquity, remember, an iniquity is an inward bent towards sin. And he, gosh, how do I say this? He, we have this inward bent for sin, and God has already released us from that sin. He's going, wow, you're already free from that thing. Are you kidding? I don't know any other way to put it than this thing is a racket. <laughs> when I look at this, I'm like, God, are you sure you knew what you were doing? I mean, there's, and here's the problem. We think we have to do something. And how we could ever think we could add to what our Heavenly Father and our brother Jesus Christ did. And then, here's the crazy thing. God looks at us and he said, okay. They're going to need some help walking in this. So, hey, I got an idea. Let's send the Holy Spirit to live in them. And he gives us a revelation. And that's what I've been praying. And we actually prayed it in the ready room. Um, that, that the Holy Spirit would give us a revelation of what God already does. Now, why is this important? Because, you know what, if I'm free, I'm free. I don't have to worry about it. Well, that's just going to give you carte blanche to sin. Not if you're in love with Jesus. If the more you fall in love with Jesus, I don't need I don't need bumpers on me to keep me behaving. Because, because I, I I've got my dad who's saying I, you don't need to go in that direction. Uh, Lori and I heard some news. Some you know she we were at the gym working out and she was um, I guess I was late. I was going to say she was late, but I was late. But anyway. Um, and she told me something had happened, or some, something had ha- gone on between these two people. And, um, and I thought, I didn't know what I was going to preach on, I thought, I said, I, I, we were sitting there talking, I said, well, he had that in his heart long before he ever acted on it. Are you getting that? 
And so what we'll do is we, we try and put these parameters and make everybody behave. Um, I'm going to say something might be controversial to some of you. I believe in having friends who are in that boat with you. I mean, I want friends in that boat with you. And sometimes people say, we need to start a men's accountability group. Let me tell you the trouble with accountability groups. Are you ready? Men lie. Let me tell you, let me tell you the problem with lady accountability groups. Women lie. Dave, how are you doing with that thing? Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Not a problem. Now, I'm not, I'm not dissing on that because we need each other. But when we understand that I'm free from that, then not only am I free from that, I'm free from the guilt and shame of trying to hide that. Are you with me? And so now I, 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 I can, I don't, have, the thing is I see too many believers faking it. And I don't want to be a church full of fakers. I would rather you come in and say this week was terrible. This week was terrible. I did everything that I didn't want to do. She's happy. <laughs> that, that sound does not interrupt this pastor. Trust me, I love it. So don't mom sit there going, stick something in her mouth, you know. That doesn't bother me at all, seriously. It's life, right? Now when they're 17, it's a little different. But anyway, <laughs> no, it's life. Are, are you guys getting the, the flavor of this thing? And, and, and so here, here's the deal. We're trying to fake this thing, and churches and pastors and religions are trying to put people in boxes. And Jesus is trying to break down the boxes. And if we don't get honest with ourselves and with each other and with Jesus, we're never going to live. We're just going to be faking it. And the trouble with faking is you forget who you told what. You ever known that? You forget how, you, that's the trouble with lying. I can't remember what I was going to say. You know, I'm like, well, I, I, instead of just, by God's grace, I'm overcoming. By God's grace, I'm free. The flesh is having a little bit of time catching up, but I'm free. I'm free. Here's the thing. You're released. You're released. You're released. And you can tell the enemy. There's an inward bent towards a sin. But I'm released from it. There's an inward bent towards anger. You just fly off a handle. But you're released from that. You're released from the worry of that. You're released from the pressure. You're released. You're released. You don't have to operate that way. You might be thinking, you know, and, and so I'm just going to, I'm going to, let the enemy know straight up front, I don't have to live this way anymore. I'm released. And you might be thinking, well, it gives me the authority to declare myself released. Well, it gives me the authority. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm glad you asked. Jesus himself. And it's found in Matthew, Mark, Luke. But it's mostly found in the book of John. In the book of John, right after the resurrection, Right after resurrection, he says to his disciples, and, and, and with this, the band's going to come on up. I want to give this to you. It's been, it, 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 in John, uh, this verse actually, John just hammers this thing. And this is a verse that has been theologically so misunderstood. I'm just going to explain it to you really quick here. John 20, 23, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, some people actually preach that this is only referring to the disciples. That's crazy. That's crazy. And, and others are saying, well, this is referring to a priesthood. You have to confess your sins to someone else to be forgiven. I, with all due respect, I think that's crazy because there's one God and there's one mediator between man and God, and his name is Christ Jesus. When you put this back in the context, remember, I'm talking about context. Here's what Jesus is saying. Now, remember, this is, for, this is during the 40 days. You gotta, to understand this verse, you've got to understand the context. Christ has been crucified. He's risen from the grave. This is during 40 days. And the main theme of his teaching of that time, what was the main theme? What was, remember what the main theme was? What we call the Great Commission. For 40 days, for 40 days, the main theme was everything you saw me do, now you're going to do. Everything you saw me do, now you're going to do. Everything you saw me do, now you're going to do. We even call it the Great Commission. He ends it with everything you've seen me do. And that's what he did. And he's telling people, you can forgive and you can be forgiven. But he says it this way. 
You've been forgiven much. Now you can forgive little. Okay? And he brings that. He brings that in. He, and he says to them, this Dave Chandler paraphrase, he says, I am the son of God. And I died for your sins and their sins. And I forgave your sins and I forgave their sins. You ought to be able to do the same thing. That's the paraphrase of what he's doing. And he keeps going back during that 40 days. Just go through the book of John, and especially after I mean, all the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, just look at him. And he's, he's telling them, it's like a 40-day uh, crash course. He's saying, you guys saw me, now I'm just telling you. And the main thing was, what I did, you do. What I did, and he switches to forgiveness. And he's, this is the most amazing thing. He says, you forgive, and they're forgiven. You hold it, and they're held. And he's talking to them, and he's talking to you and I. And so what we have to come to the point is, he says, he says, if you release people, they're released. If you, and, and if you release yourself, they're released. How? Because of the authority Jesus Christ gave each and every one of us. So I can stand and I can look at the enemy in the face and say, you have no power over me because I'm released. And I can profess that over your life. Now, okay, this is a freebie. And now I'm on a soapbox. It is darn time the body of Christ practiced releasing and not reminding. We were never told to remind. We were told to release. Are you getting this? And every time you release somebody, you get to practice you're released. Oh, but I screwed up. No, but you were released. Oh, but you don't know how much I messed up. No, but I know how much you're released. Instead of looking at them and saying, I can't believe you did that again. I can't believe you did that again. No, and this is what Jesus is telling the disciples. You never saw Jesus look at somebody and say, you did it, I saw you do it, you did it. No, he stood there. I mean, how many times, you know, Jesus kept his mouth zipped until the opportunity, he's a smart dude, he's very smart. And then he, he just, matter of fact, the only people he picked on unmercifully was those who thought they were better. They thought they had it on their own. We call them the Pharisees. You're released, and you get to release other people. Isn't that amazing? You're released, and you get to practice releasing. You get to practice the, 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 the ministry of releasing. Jesus said that you're, you're making a plea for people to be reconciled to Christ, and part of reconciling to Christ is to remember. You will never be reconciled to Christ until you realize your sin is not counted anymore. You will stay out in the foyer. You will never come into the family room until you realize. You'll come into the family room and you'll skirt around because you'll think God is, you know, you'll be kind of like, I'm just going to sit over here. I'm going to sit in the back here. I'm not going to make a big deal. I don't want God to see me. I know God's not very happy with me. I've had people say to me, God's not happy with me right now. Where in the world did you get that? Well, I just know God. <laughs> no, apparently you do not, <laughs> with all due respect. Instead of just walking in and saying, Dad. And him going, oh, ah, come here. Come here. We got a poodle. She's close to giving her life to Jesus. We leave and we turn on Positive Life Radio. But whenever she's done something, she does this. You can tell. How many of you got dogs? Cats are, what a, what a cat, anyway. I'm sorry. Cats, yeah, what a cat. They're just aloof. Dogs, they do something wrong, and they, they, they kind of look at you. You don't even know what they've done, but they're kind of looking at you like, I wonder if he's going to see all the plants out on the living room floor here. And if you go, what did you do? They just, I mean, we can come home. That dog can do nothing wrong. We go, what did you do? And she'll just go, uh, she's, you can see her mind racing. What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Mm -hmm. Or you can come home and you can go, ah, and she just lights up. Are you with me? You ever done that? Okay, I hope this works for you because it works for me. Every time I come home, the father goes, ah, and I don't have to cower. I get to light up. And then I find myself saying, I'm so glad I'm here. I'm so glad. By the way, I might have pulled a few plants out. <laughs> yeah, 
I know. I saw. We'll take care of it. But first, come here. That's our Heavenly Father. Would you stand, please? Yeah, yeah. Give the Lord a clap offering. I ask you this every week. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you? What's the Holy Spirit saying to you? None of us are, none of us are exempt from this. Lord, what are you saying to me? We just take a moment, Father, we thank you. Thank you. The ministry teams are making their for, way forward. Father, what are you saying to us this morning? Show us today, this week. Show us today, give us, give us that grasp of how high, how wide, how deep is your love for us. Give us a grasp. Now we want to pray for you this morning before you leave. If you need prayer for anything, anything, healing, whatever, you know, whatever it is, you've got the benefits. You got the benefit package. We're just going to go through this for a few minutes. You come now. Let's worship the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're in this place. You come.
So no more are we going to let our past and our interpretation of it, which often blows it much bigger than it was, and no longer will we allow other people to remind us or the enemy to remind us because we are free and we're new people. Lord, I'm glad that you didn't remodel us. It says you made us new. <laughs> I like that. You didn't just hammer out the dents and slap a little putty on us. You, you gave us a brand new model. And I thank you for that. Now, many of us in this room are feeling pretty good right now, but we're going to walk out those doors, and things are going to happen. We call them quinky dinks, but we know it's really the enemy coming along and reminding us. Because, Lord, we, you know this better than us. We all carry some pain and regret. But we're choosing right now here at this campus in Moses Lake and LCF Online that we're not going to live a life of regret anymore. We're going to squeeze the life you have given us out of every moment. And we're going to embrace who we are in you. We're going to recognize that without you we're hopelessly lost, but with you we're new and we can do all things. So we're choosing today this Memorial Weekend of 2022 to embrace the benefits of being your kid, being forgiven. And we also embrace being agents of forgiveness. We're going to let you, we're going to let you use us to be agents of forgiveness. So we're going to help people who need be released. We're not going to remind them of anything except how good you are. That's all we're going to remind him of. 